you have addictions and habits that are giving you what you want? Or you do you have addictions and habits that literally pull you away from your goals and make it almost impossible for you to succeed? Now the first thing that you must realize is that your brain dictates everything. And we allow or don't allow things to happen based on what we're okay with or will accept. A lot of people say that you're the highest version of yourself. The truth is you're not. You are actually the lowest level of yourself that you will accept, right? You will do the things that are the, the, the lowest level you that you will accept. Not the best version, because if you were the best version, you would do everything perfect. So kind of, what, what do I mean by this? Have you ever looked at something and said, oh, you know, I'm unhappy with it, but it's okay? Or, you know, I worked out really hard, but not as hard. I could have worked out harder. Um, uh, you know, I put in a lot of work at, at work, but, you know, I take a long lunch break. Those are all actions and phrases that someone that said, someone that is the lowest level of themselves would say. Because that's accepting the mediocreness of your actions versus accepting and expecting the highest level version of yourself. So, let's go back to what we were actually talking about. And that is, are your habits building you? Are your addictions building you? Or are they draining you and pulling you away from your goals? To be honest, for over the last probably 13 years, since I was 16, I had an addiction. Okay, Some of you guys might know about this addiction. Others probably haven't even realized it. But I cut this addiction off a little over six months ago, almost cold turkey, finally. I did a, a couple of times over the course of the last probably 13, 14 years. Now, what was this addiction? This addiction was me getting a daily energy drink or more. I was drinking two to three Red Bulls, Monsters, Spikes, energy drinks. I was drinking two to three of those a day, if not more. And I've been doing that since I was 16. Now, how did this happen? This happened because I turned myself into a habit of going to the gas station almost every day or every couple days. What I would do is I would take a specific path to work, to the gym, to the areas and activities that I would do on a daily or weekly basis. On those routine drives, I had my routine stops, much like people have their routine daily go out and smoke. And what I would do is every day I would stop at this gas station or the couple gas stations that I'd frequent and I'd get a, a, a Red Bull or multiples for that day and the next day. This was costing me at least $15 or more a day. And I've been doing this for almost my whole life since I've been in high school until this point now. And this was a habit that I had ingrained so deeply that literally I was doing it almost on autopilot. Every day I would go through the steps and I'd stop at the gas station, I'd buy my energy drinks and I would do this constantly, every day routinely. And this was a habit. This was a subconscious habit that I didn't even realize had been locked in so ingrained. The problem though is that I, when I had tried to take out this habit, when I tried to take out this addiction, so let me backtrack one more thing. I have a very addictive personality. So if I get locked into something, I am addicted to it. My brain will not stop thinking about it, acting on it, doing it until either it is solved, it's resolved, or I've worked through it, right? So for instance, right now I'm currently looking at houses. I'm trying to buy a house or find something to rent. This means that I'm in this addicted personality state where all I'm doing is getting some of, I'm doing my work, my main things that I have to get done, but then I'm spending almost two to three hours a day on, um, real estate listings, looking for homes, looking for places that might come up for sale or lease. So I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to this, right? And you're probably addicted to things too. You're addicted to the feelings, the thoughts, the actions, and the behaviors that happen to you following something you might do. Now you can have good addictions and you can have bad addictions, but for most of us, we, we primarily have bad addictions. How can I say that? Because most of us are not in the state or place that we wanna be, which means that we're letting bad things, the negative habits and negative addictions and negative actions that we take to run more of our daily activities in life than we do our positives. So what are good addictions and what are bad addictions? A good addiction might be going to the gym every day and working on your health. A bad addiction might be drugs or alcohol. A good addiction might be being diligent about you know the foods that you put into your body. A bad addiction might be drinking alcohol every day, right? But you don't realize the addictions until you actually realize them. You stop, you take a second, you take some space, and you realize what you're doing. The same thing goes for habits. Your habits are either positive or negative. A positive habit might be going again to the gym every day, while a negative habit is stopping at the gas station and buying my Red Bull, okay? So we oftentimes also allow our negative addictions or negative habits to be outweighed or drawn upon 
by our positive habits. What do I mean by this? I'm sure you've done this because I've done it too. You have a good workout, you go to the gym, but then you reward yourself and you do it every day. After the gym, you reward yourself. You go to Starbucks and get the caramel frappuccino or you go and have you know the two drinks of wine with your friends because you earned it. But guess what? Every day you do that, you're just wiping your thing out. You're basically putting a good habit with a bad habit and the bad habit will win because the bad habit will continue even when the good habit has been stopped or paused. How do you know? How do I know? Because how many times did I initially say that I was going to only have my Red Bulls on days that I worked out and then I still went and got my Red Bulls and didn't work out? Your habits will dictate and run. The, po the positive habits will be outweighed by the negative habits. So what you must do is start to create positive addictions or positive habits. But it all starts by realizing and recognizing the bad actions, decisions, and choices that you are making consciously and unconsciously. A conscious action is one that you purposefully do. An unconscious action is one that you almost do on autopilot. Most of our habits and addictions are just on autopilot because they've been ingrained and naturalized to where they've grown and they're so powerful that we don't even have to think about them. So how do you stop yourself from doing this? Again, I've already said you must realize it. Realization is the first key. So. By understanding and realizing it, you can then make the proper choices and adjustments to make the new choices. How I did this for my addiction? I simply started going different ways. When I had the craving of stopping at the gas station that I would always stop at routinely, I'd either take another path or I'd tell myself, if I want one, I, I'm not gonna stop at this gas station, but if I go to the next one and I want it there, I will have it there. That is one of my tricks to getting out of act, uh, activities that I might do subconsciously and that is subtly just saying to myself that I'm not going to have it in this moment but if it's still craving in 10 I will have it then okay very easy right because usually what's happening is we just got our minds jumbled and we want to do something because we have our brains on it but if we can space ourselves away from that thought for a bit 10 15 even 20 minutes or enough to drive five to six blocks we can pull ourselves from the thought process and allow us to say okay this is good or a bad decision that's it. Now, what we do with habits and addictions, we also want to nurture them and fill them with positives. What we want to do here is imagine we have a, a, a plant, right? When we take the plant out of the vase, that's like taking a, an addictive or a bad habit out of the vase. But then we just have this vase, so we're going to have to put something in it. We do not want to just subtract. We want to always be adding. Because when we add things into this, we allow ourselves to have something else to focus on. We have something else to draw our attention. We have something else to pull us in the direction of the positive. So another one that I did is when I, once I cut out my daily Red Bull habit, I subbed in a new habit. And that new habit was two things. One, I had a green smoothie every day. So I cut out my energy drink and then I gave myself a green smoothie. Second thing is I applied a rule that I would only have a pre-workout energy drink on days that I work out. That means if I don't train, I don't drink coffee, and I don't have anything else. But what I do have is my green smoothie every day. So I filled my negative habit and my negative addiction with a positive habit that is now being so ingrained that every day you might see that I have them all behind me. That's because I go to Jamba Juice nearly every day and sub out my, po my, neg my old negative habit for my new positive habit. That is how you can sub, or that's how you can get yourself out of negative actions, negative habits, negative addictions. Now, some people might say, okay, the, an addiction is one thing, and you're absolutely correct. But with addictions, we're, we're chasing, with both habits and addictions, we're chasing something. And that chasing is usually a feeling, a thought, or a behavior. And most often than not, it's a, it's a thought or it's a feeling. And those thoughts and feelings usually come back to the six human needs that we all have, which I'm not going to go into. But for most times, a bad action and a bad habit usually leads to us wanting one or two things. We're craving or looking for attention or we're craving and looking for significance. So what this... And then we're also looking for things that make us feel good or bad or make us feel a certain way. Because what happens is whatever we do, negative or positive, will elicit a response in our body. Sometimes that a negative response will be more powerful to us than a positive response. That's why we do the bad things. That's why we'll constantly go out and drink even though we hate it and we wake up the next day and say it's not worth it. We'll do that because when we're out, 
that out activity will fulfill the need of significance. How so? Because when you're out in public, you're not at home. When you're with friends, you feel important, you feel like you have significance, and you feel like you're part of something. So we'll take bad actions to have that positive response. So what you want to then do is look at the question of what is the action that I'm taking or what is the action habit or addiction that I have currently? And what is the feelings that I elicit from this? For me, the idea of drinking an energy drink was a story that I was telling myself that it helped me with my energy and I liked the taste. Neither of those were true, but I told myself that. Then I also felt significant because every time I talked to someone, I got to brag about how much energy drinks and caffeine I had. Have you ever heard the people at the office or work that say, oh man, I drink four cups of coffee a day. That's their way of feeling significant because now they have something they get to brag about. They get to say, be proud of, even though it's not something to be actually be proud of. They get to brag about something that they're better than or do more than of someone else. And that's how I felt when I was doing my energy drinks every day. I would then go to be able to tell you guys, my clients and everybody else that, oh my God, I get to drink so many energy drinks. And then I then this, this person that was using that to feel significant, even though it wasn't true. Instead, I change that mentality, I find what it was, and then I shift patterns, I shift activities to fulfill that significance in another way. So the same thing must go for you guys. One, if you have a habit, you have an addiction, you wanna start realizing these things very, very quickly. The sooner you can realize them, the sooner you can make the changes. And the changes should not be drastic overalls. They need to be put into place where you can take the action or habit or ritual or addiction you have and fill it in with something else. You do not wanna only subtract from your, your activities. You want to add things in. You wanna always be adding positive actions, positive habits, positive routines, positive rituals, and positive addictions into your life to allow yourself to draw things out when you don't add but you only subtract you're going to have a void and then when you have that void the easiest thing in life happens the path of least resistance what do you think the path of, path of least resistance is it's when you go back to your old habits routines addictions and bad decisions that's the easiest path the hard path the hard path is growth the hard path is doing the things that you know that you need to do to achieve and get what you want so, hopefully this all nice 13 minute video makes sense to you. You guys understand the idea between an addiction and a habit, if they're lining up with where you wanna be, how to draw from them the information that you're, you're, you're gaining from them, the, the reasons and the backstories behind why you do these things, to then be able to narrow down the feelings and the thoughts and the actions that are, you're getting from this, to then be able to put in new positive steps. Also a couple tips on how you guys can take yourself out of the bad habits and rituals that you normally perform and start eliciting better new ones that will gain and give you what you want. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Otherwise, if you want help on your mindset, you wanna shift your mindset in a drastically new paradigm, you want to start thinking on a whole new spectrum and scale, then click the link above, let's have a conversation, let's chat and see where you're kind of at mentally and, and, and with your mindset, where you're at, bad habits, bad addictions and activities, and then where you wanna go and how we can build new positive mental mind blocks that will help you with your addictions and positive addictions. Po start and uh, elicit positive and growth habits that will give you what you want and the outcomes that you want. We can have a conversation, see if it's the right fit and see if we wanna work together to make you shift these things in a direction and give you the paradigm shift that you want to get where you